Hey everyone, it is me Jess and today I thought I would do another monthly favorites video. I did this back for March and I had a lot of fun doing it and I thought I would do it for April. I just want to show you some of the products that I've been loving this past month, talk about some of the TV shows that I watched that I think maybe you'll like and a couple other uh, just miscellaneous favorites that I've had. I love doing these little sit down videos, simple, sweet, to the point, and hopefully you enjoy it. So without further ado, these are all the things that I loved in April. First things first, I'm gonna take these off because the first thing that I did in the monthly April was finally get some new glasses. Now, I ordered these off of Firmu back in March, but I wasn't able to get in to see my eye doctor until the very beginning of April, and they are my new prescription. So that is why I'm still wearing my old ones because I'm having to like wean myself off of those ones because my prescription has changed and it's making me feel like, nauseous you know when you wear them for a long time and it's just because I have to get used to the new prescription. I haven't had my eyes tested since 2019. I feel like COVID just completely took over anything maintenance wise because I hadn't seen a dentist since 2019. I came to that realization when my dentist called me and said hey <laughs> you good? And then I realized, oh yeah, still haven't gotten my eyes tested as well. So I went out, got these from Firmu, put my prescription in them. I used to work with Firmu back in the day. I bought these with my own money, but you can always get your prescription filled with online glasses on the site. I just didn't because I knew I had to get a new prescription. So I got those ones, which I love. And I used to make fun of everyone who would do this with glasses um you know like the progressives is that what they're called when they like turn into sunglasses i used to make fun of everyone for that i don't know why i was i would just make fun of you for it i.e my mom because i thought it was like an old person thing well turns out i'm old and it just made complete sense to me to get them for these because I wanted heart-shaped sunglasses. Why not kill two birds with one stone? I went out and actually got like a good prescription for some Ray-Bans, but then I'm always forgetting to wear them. So I was like, maybe my mom was onto something when she got progressives because I can now wear, you know, sunglasses in the car because I'll already need glasses for the car because that's something that changed on the old license. Sorry, you're literally being held up by two boxes of cereal right now because I'm using a shorter tripod. Um, my license changed. I now have to wear glasses at all times while driving. I mean, I was wearing glasses driving anyway, but now it's like official. I can't be caught without my glasses. So that was the first couple of things I loved in April. Again, I'm still getting used to them, but it was definitely time because the ones that I have been using for the past four years, they're just, they're a little worse for wear. So it like, I can't even bend this. It's super glued on and then also duct taped. No, electrical tape not even duct taped. So that's what I've been loving. Um, so let's just move on to some skincare. First things first, I talked about a sleep mask that I loved in the month of March. I'm still loving it. I use it sparingly though, because I cannot find it, but it was just a face mask that you would put on before bed. It was infused with lavender. I loved it, but I came across this and knock on wood, even though I'm old, I still don't need to completely transition to like the crazy expensive face washes just yet. I have a pretty nice face wash that I use in the morning, but for night, I can still kind of get away with using the cheap stuff from the, you know, uh, pharmacy. So this is what I've been using. It is the Clean and Clear Night Relaxing Deep 
cleaning facial cleanser and it just makes me feel nice and calm at night i know it's placebo i know clean and clear is not putting me to sleep it's the melatonin that i'm taking but i still like it and knock on wood it actually does make my skin feel nice and clean it does what it says it's supposed to clean and clear but who knows who knows if it's actually doing anything but i would like to think it is because it makes me feel just like decompressed at night. It's just a nice little staple I've added into my skincare nightly routine. For the daytime though, for some new skincare products, I have been using the NYX Freeze Face, the Freezy Face. This is a combo of face moisturizer and a nice little primer. It is just, I love it. This is the best purchase I have made in a long time. The inside reminds me of like Vicks Vapor Rub and that's kind of what the consistency is but once you put it on your face it really does cool everything down and the primer is actually top notch. It's sticky but not like that gross sticky. It just makes it so that your makeup stays in place. It also blurs some of my pores and fine lines and for drugstore makeup uh, I just it's really, really great. So I know NYX can kind of fall on the pricier side for drugstore makeup, but I still think it was worth every penny and this will definitely be a rebuy. Now, simple, I haven't been using a lot of makeup products on my face, uh, like any new makeup products on my face, but some of the ones that I have been gravitating towards have just made a staple in my makeup routine for the month of April. I'm always always a believer that benefit the benetint uh lip stain and cheek stain is probably one of the best products out there it's my holy grail product i use it on my cheeks i use it on the little bridge of my nose and then what i've been doing is using this as a lip stain but then topping it with the ph adjusting lip oil from Kyo, is that what this is? It's like the Shoppers Drug Mart brand, um, the Kyo Beauty Lip Oil. Now, I know I'm kind of defeating the purpose because this is supposed to adjust to my pH balance. So it's like, does this kind of, you know, cancel each other out? I don't know, but it's what I'm wearing on my lips now. And I find that the combo just makes my lip shade so natural looking, but just nice and 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 rosy pink for spring both of these products i have used on its own they work great by themselves but together i've just found it's like the best lip combo and i i mean if you don't get this okay there's tons of you know ph balancing type lip oils out there i will always recommend this always i have been using this specific product probably since I was 25 and I'm almost 40. So you do the math because I'm not. And I always repurchase this. Always. It's just the best. If you're going on vacation, you don't need to bring a ton of stuff. Just bring this and you're like half done your makeup routine right there. I know this is going to sound very weird, but there has been one snack that for whatever reason I have been obsessed with for the past couple of weeks. I'm not pregnant, so, you know, but it is a weird combo. I take Cheez-Its. Cheez-Its are great on their own, but you know what I do to like amp it up just a little bit? I take the Cheez-Its and I put it in a bowl and I sprinkle white vinegar on it, a little bit of salt, and it is the best snack of all time. I always do that with plain ruffle chips too. I always take ruffle chips, throw white vinegar on it, toss them up, and we're good to go. But doing that with Cheez-Its just brings that game to a whole other level. And I do not know if this is just a Canadian thing, but we here in Canada, 
We love dousing our french fries in vinegar, not malt vinegar, which I still like to do when I'm having fish and chips. But no, we take our french fries and we douse it with white vinegar and then tons of salt. And it's like the best. Every time we go to the States, my husband always has to like smuggle in a few packets of, you know, vinegar condiment packages that we can get at like McDonald's or something because you guys don't do that in the States. They one time looked at us like we were absolutely insane when my husband asked for white vinegar and they th said like cleaning solution. And he's like, no, like bottled white vinegar for my French fries. It blew their minds. So I don't know if it's just not a thing there, but we put white vinegar on like our French fries. I've put it on my popcorn before, divine. And now I put it on my Cheez-Its and it makes for the best snack. The last little product that I have to show is not really like all that special. I got it offline. I'm pretty sure I got it on Amazon. Yeah, it's got to be on an Amazon. But it's just my newest little AirPods holder. I think it's so cute, which is so funny because um, my husband thinks it's horrifying, but I think it's adorable. And what's so funny is that I had a childhood stuffy that had this exact same type of face and I swear only 80 babies 80s babies will know this little clown design it was like all over like plushies and and wall hangings it just brought me right back to my childhood it was very cheap it was like 10 bucks off of Amazon and I love it so much. Alrighty, so let's move on to a couple of TV shows that I absolutely loved in the month of April. Both are very adult, so just keep that in mind. Very traumatizing, uh, dark. Both of these series are just chock full of a bunch of trigger warnings. So make sure you read up on that before you decide to take the plunge. The first one, if you haven't heard of it, you're definitely living under a rock because everyone's talking about it all over social media, all over TikTok, and that is Baby Reindeer. It's on Netflix. It was a very fast watch for me, but it was a very traumatic or like traumatizing watch for me specifically episode four if you know you know it is just some of the best television I have watched in a long time it follows a man and this is all completely true and the man who the story is about is playing himself in the show and because it is very heavy it's just it's unreal that he was able to relive this I guess but it follows a man who's struggling to become a comedian and he is also struggling with a lot of like inner demons and just things that have happened in his life and then it just kind of like topples all over when he finds that he's being stalked by a very ill woman and it starts off very innocently and it just spirals out of control. Now episode four is where a lot of people found that they struggled with wanting to continue watching the series but I highly recommend it. If you truly don't think that you could get through some of the subject matter again a, a great a great website if you ever want to see what you're up against go to does the dog die.com i know it's very like menacing that title of a website but it, it truly does tell you all the different things that you will have to endure while watching a movie or a tv show get through the fourth episode if you can the rest of the season is just it's it's heartbreaking it's traumatic but it's so beautifully told and you really truly feel for not only the person getting stalked but you also feel for the person stalking they make both characters just so human and they both have their faults they both have their lovable side which is hard to when you're talking about a stalker but it's true you feel for the stalker and I cannot recommend this show enough it was just so well written so well directed and so well acted I know a lot of people are trying to hunt down the real stalker on social media I actually do think they were able to find her 
Now, the creator has gone on to say in many interviews and on his own personal Instagram to just stop. That wasn't what the show was intended for. This person was obviously struggling with massive mental health issues and there's no need to cause any more strife in her life or in his. So if you're finding yourself down that rabbit hole of who she is once you finish watching the show, just keep that in the back of your mind. The second show is actually a season two. It's Them, and you can find them on Prime. Now, Them was kind of an underrated gem when it came out a couple years ago, and it was so disturbing but so good and it's a psychological thriller. Truthfully, I think them is what American Horror Story strives to be and there's only been two seasons. It's an anthology and it is centered around a black family. Now the first season, you kind of have to watch it to wrap things up for season two, but they are standalone. If you watch both though, you'll come to realize why at the end. Uh, why you might want to watch the first one. But again, major trigger warnings for both seasons. The first season follows a black family in the 50s who moved to a predominantly white neighborhood and just all the things that are going on, um, not only with the fact that they have incredibly racist neighbors, but there's also an entity that's taking over the family. And the second season, which just came out on Prime, it follows some of the same characters in the first season, but they're new characters. Stay with me. Again, it's an anthology. And this time around, we're following a cop from LA who's not only having to deal with racial injustice, um, this is right around the time with the Rodney King situation and the LA riots, but she's also having to solve a murder, series of murders that are all happening that are very gory and very scary, and they might just be tied to her. That's all I'm gonna say. Amazing performances by everyone. Both seasons are spectacular. Again, if you love dark and disturbing content, keep that in mind. But I, I truly think that uh, if American Horror Story could try to get on the whole them bandwagon, their seasons would be a lot better. And uh, I would admit to actually enjoying American Horror Story again because I didn't even finish this past season. I watched three episodes and I just couldn't. It's horrible. Even though Kim Kardashian, she is boss in this season. I just can't do it. Uh, so I guess that would be one downside of April is uh, the new season of American Horror Story. There you have it. Those were the things that I loved, loved, loved in April. Hopefully you enjoy these type of videos. If you want to see more videos on the content that I'm watching, whether it be YouTube, TV, or movies, I would love to share that with you. I do have a letter box. Uh, if you want that information, just let me know. I update it religiously. I'm one of those kind of people. And I do try to keep up with a lot of the new TV shows that are out. Some of them I just won't give a second episode to because I am not enjoying it. And I really do love the dark and disturbing content, but I love the trashy TV as well. Uh, absolutely loving the new season of The Challenge All Stars. And if you wanna know who I want to win this season, Leroy. I will always have a special place in my heart for Leroy and I truly hope this will be the season he can finally win because he's never been able to and he's like that one person that I think deserves it the most. So if you're following the challenge all-stars just know that I am rooting 100% for Leroy. But if you want to follow me you can always do so over on Instagram Anti Beauty Queen, the same way it's spelled here. And if you like this video, maybe you could hit that subscribe button and we can hang out more. Hopefully you have a great May and I'll talk to you very, very soon. Bye.